Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we will be taking a look at the recently released feature for Samsung SmartThings, adding support for Android Auto. The feature will allow for you to have up to six devices that can be displayed and controlled through Android Auto. In order to have this integration, you will need to have version 1.7.59.23 or later of the Samsung SmartThings app. This version is rolling out at the time of this recording, but you can find the APK online if you don't want to wait. If you have the proper version installed, you can make changes to what is shown in Android Auto by opening the main menu by clicking on the hamburger menu on the top left hand side of the screen. Next click on the cog at the top, and then scroll down to Android Auto. If you don't see the option here, verify that you are running a version that supports it and that you are in a supported region. Otherwise, you can go ahead and click on Android Auto. Here you will be able to make several changes to how Samsung SmartThings is displayed when using Android Auto. If you have multiple SmartThings hubs tied to your account, you can make selections for each hub here as well, along with picking the six icons you want to show on Android Auto. To make changes, click on Choose Items. If you have SmartThings Home Monitor set up, you can select it as one of your display options. You are also able to select any scenes you have set up and can add pretty much any device that is tied into your hub. Select the devices you want to add. Taking note that you do not have to have six if you don't want, and that the SmartThings Home Monitor, along with any scene selected, count towards your six allowed items. Once you have what you want selected, scroll to the bottom and then click on Done. You are able to rearrange the icons as you see fit. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen an option called Scene Notification. Clicking on it will allow for you to enable or disable a notification for when you arrive to or leave from your selected hub location. To have this feature enabled, you will need to have the SmartThings app set up to be able to track your location. If you do not, you will get a pop-up when trying to enable the notification that will help you walk through the steps of enabling the function. If enabled, you are able to assign any scene you have already created and assign it to either the arriving or leaving activity. You will only get this notification when your phone is running Android Auto and it is connected to your car. Let's now take a look at how everything works when actually using it. At the top of SmartThings on Android Auto, you'll be able to select which hub you have open. Clicking on the Locations button will allow for you to switch between hubs if you have more than one setup. Next, clicking on the Settings cog on the right hand side will allow for you to enable or disable a couple notifications and has an option to open more settings on your phone. The main menu will show the six devices you have selected for that hub. Depending on the type of device, clicking on a device will have different outcomes. Clicking on SmartThings Home Monitor Security gives you the ability to change the security mode your hub is in currently. Depending on the mode set, the icon on the main menu will change as well. Nest cameras, and I assume any others added to SmartThings, will not live stream if added to Android Auto. The only thing you would have from them is the motion detection state being visible. Contact sensors are similar to cameras where there are no settings or actions to take with them, so clicking on them does not provide any function. Light switches simply act as toggles when pushed. I also added two devices that are currently offline for my network to see how they are handled. The first is a Z-Wave light switch that is no longer connected. Clicking it will have the icon look pressed and sit there doing nothing for several seconds until it finally goes back to its original state. Half the time I got a message saying the device was unreachable and the other half I did not get a message. The last device is a SwitchBot bot connected to a SwitchBot hub. The hub and other devices were connected fine to SmartThings. This bot was just out of range from the SwitchBot hub to see what would happen. Clicking it causes the icon to update and shows that the device is offline. Let's now go for a drive to test out the leaving and arriving scene notifications. These trigger based on your phone's location relative to the location you set for your hub. As you exit the geofence around your hub location, you will get a notification asking if you want to run the scene you configured for leaving. If you click on the notification, it will run that scene. If you ignore the notification or close it, then it will not run. Clicking on the notification triggers the scene to run and gives you a success message on the screen. It's time to head back and test out the arriving scene notification. As you enter the geofence for the location around your hub, you will receive a similar notification asking if you want to run the scene you configured for arriving. This notification will be shown even if you are in another Android Auto app. Clicking on the notification will open the SmartThings app and show a confirmation that the scene configured for arriving has run. This new Android Auto integration from Samsung SmartThings is pretty neat and has a lot of great use cases. I could see it being handy if you have a smart garage door opener and don't want to have the remote in your car anymore, or being able to easily trigger events when leaving or arriving, such as turning porch lights on when you get home at night, or turning lights off as you drive away. I do wish that you had the option to auto-trigger scenes based on your geolocation, on top of being given the option to trigger them selectively, as I can see use cases for both. 
On the first startup of the SmartThings app on Android Auto, I noticed it was a bit slow to start, but after that everything felt really responsive and functioned as expected. I'd love to know what you think of this new feature from SmartThings and what you'd like to see added to it, so let me know in the comments below. Or if you run into any problems setting it up, don't hesitate to ask. Also, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first to know when I release a new video. Thank you for watching.